Now then, let me catch up with uh, Colm Crawley to find out what is going on currently in Ballinasloe because um, they, they have a busy production, I have to say, currently. Uh, and um, I, he joins me on line one uh, today. And uh, Colm, good morning to you. Good morning, Keith. How are things? You have a lot on in today in, in the April-May edition. We've had a busy uh, few weeks and we've had a fun f- fill a few weeks. It was great to see the St. Patrick's Day parades back. And of course, we had a double whammy uh, March 17th in Ballinus Low. The, 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 the joy for people on the parade <laughs> and the large crowd that were attending at it was topped by the roars from all the taverns uh, for, uh, as loud as what was coming in from the Cotswolds in Cheltenham with flooring porters win. It seemed everybody in the parish and <laughs> in the locality had a few uh, shillings on, on the same set horse. So we, we captured a lot of the celebrations and um, the two families are very well known to, to most people in Bandleslow, South, and South Galway, and East Galway, and South Wisconsin. So that was fun. So we covered a bit of that in the magazine, which was nice, I suppose. Um, I suppose I, two of the things that were that were was the uh, magazine focused on was the whole issue of the sale of Garbley. Garbley Mansion has been offered and say uh, for sale by the Diocese authorities and uh, to Galway County Council and that has whetted a lot of, of interest as to what may or may not occur to the mansion which is and the grounds which is a huge uh, critical part of infrastructure and the heritage and um, oh, Ballislow, understanding yeah. of Ballislow, you know so people are concerned that that the right decisions for the long term future of the town and its populace and indeed visitors down the, the road would, would be would be kept to the fore and um, certainly the, the local area councillors um, have been um, quite strong in their view that uh, all avenues of the disposal of, of the mansion and its future maintenance should be explored by, by the uh, local authority and the current owners. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be watching that space very closely because a lot of people, even those who weren't educated there, are very affectionate and very fond of the space. And they, it is the Phoenix Park of Anna Sloan in one sense. It is. You know, a lot of people who take doggies or go for a small cycle with, with family tend to use the grounds and... Um, the uh, authorities have been very kind to people, I suppose, uh, in allowing us to, to roam freely about. But if a new owner was to be found, or if, if that changes, it, it, we just wonder what, how, what, what impacts that would, that would have, you know. Okay. So a bit of nervousness there. Um, the draft balance law local area plan is coming uh, to its finality this week, I think, for, for uh, any more amendments. It's on display in the library and the local offices. We covered a bit of that. Uh, our Presbyterian Church has got some small uh, grant aid from a recent round from the Heritage Council. So that uh, pr- uh, significant building on Society Street is going to be uh, maintained for, for future generations, which is good to know. Uh, we have a new general ma- manager appointed for our Shearwater Hotel. And in, in keeping with the tourism uh, agenda, I suppose, uh, a new uh, loose uh, alliance of tourism interests in uh, Banlaslo and the surrounding necklace of villages uh, is uh, slowly coming together as a result of a feasibility study done by the development company. And uh, they've had a number of meetings with uh, various um, parties and we've reported on that. Because, of course, the Greenway is coming to Banlaslo and we have the makings of the Bloom Way. We have the bear of uh, Breffney walkway passing through our town and the yeah. battlefield site there. So there's a lot of uh, visitor attractions available in town. And just, I suppose, it's it's um, uh, interesting to see how other towns along the Hidden Heartlands have capitalised on their asset base. And Banlaslo and the surrounding villages in Shannon Bridge, as far south as Millic Lock and as far north as Ballyforden, are looking at repositioning ourselves into that short brick destination market. Yeah. Um, it's great, and I mean, I see that the work I heard in local news here um, last week it was uh, that the work has started on the new multiplex cinema there as well. Yeah, people are giddy <laughs> with anticipation for that. I mean, uh, most people of a certain generation would remember Ballinasloe being a town of two cinemas and two screens, and then there was a period where we had no cinema. And uh, according to the Ward Anderson Group, who are developing the five screen multiplex adjacent to the Tesco site. Uh, just to the right of Aldi. Their five screens will be up and operational in September, October this year, which would be phenomenal uh, because that would be a huge draw in for the wider hinterland of 30,000, you know, who tend to have to go to Galway or to if they want a, an omniplex uh, movie experience. So that's, that's great news uh, for our community. Um, have to put in the Pope, uh, I don't know if you if you to do frequent the taverns of town, but one of the oldest pubs that we have in town, uh, Ken Kelly did a very nice feature on um, Martin and Mike Ryan and the Ryan Family Pub, which has been serving uh, patrons since 1934, and it's very deeply entwined in the um, sinews of the the town, which is is, is nice, I suppose. Um, 
and I suppose something else that I would draw your listeners' attention to uh, f- on this morning. Um, everyone is familiar with the town vis-a-vis our huge and international festival standing the October Fair, uh, which happens and hopefully will be returning again this season after the, the COVID break. But there's over nine festivals now on the festival calendar for Banlaslow and its environs, if you include the Mount Bellew um, uh, Vintage Show, if you include the, the uh, Aircourt Rally, there's some new festivals in, in Ockram this, this summer, and there's uh, five new festivals in the town. When I say new, they're in the last six years, the Larry Reynolds, the Dindy Delaney, we're starting off the festival season with Dindy Delaney in the Maybank Hall weekend, and it's just, we're trying in the magazine to keep a, 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 a 12 monthly guide ahead, because most people, um, in planning their their vacation time or their weekends away, you know, the, the, the fridge doors are getting fairly full under the magnet of what they have to do. So the, the, the more notice we can give them, the better we, we have a chance of you're perhaps dead right, you're dead right. you're dead right. to come to events. Yeah, so the uh, Dinny Delaney's on the May Bank Holiday weekend. Uh, Larry Reynolds is back on the second weekend in September. The Livestock Festival is in Ockram. The Town Hall Program is don't forget as the well. County Flowers coming to Balance Law as well. So the traditional and folk um, mus- musical uh, genres are being well catered for in, in the East Galway uh, capital. Uh, All right. It's good. Um, and don't forget our active retirements at their annual general meeting. I think they celebrated some 20 years. The event guide, uh, which um, is sponsored by Galway Bay, after nine editions, Keith, can you imagine that? Nine lonely editions with no events in the community, and we are back with an events guide for April and May, which was one of the most pleasing things to see, I suppose, okay. in the whole publication. The groups and organisations are coming out and getting to do stuff again, which is great. Listen, Colm, good to talk to you. Uh, Balance Low Life um, again being delivered and available in all uh, of the various outlets in Balance Low. But listen, thanks for joining us and have a good and a safe week.